Have you ever wondered what it's like to take your first flying lesson? Well, today you get to be a fly on the wall while David, a new local student pilot, takes his first step to becoming a private pilot. Come follow along. Hello aviators, my name is Chris Palmer from angleofattack.com and I am a flight instructor here in Homer, Alaska. I've got a local student, he just started, he wants to get going and we're gonna go up today and start his first official lesson. I've already done a discovery flight with him. He's really excited to get his pilot license. He's already doing some parasailing and paragliding. So this will be a cool process to start that powered aircraft uh, component of what he's learning. So come follow along. There's gonna be a lot of great fundamentals that we go through on this lesson and I hope you enjoy it. Now we are going to taxi out. Uh, let's just talk about, let's talk about our departure. Let's talk about where we're going. Let's talk about um, kind of what we're looking for today. So we're gonna work on like the four fundamentals. We're gonna work on climbs, descents, straight and level flight and turns. But I also wanna introduce the trim wheel. I want to introduce uh, attitude flying, which we talked a little bit about last time. We have a lot of distracting instruments here, but the biggest instrument you have is outside the airplane, and I want to talk about that a lot today, and, and where you look for the different things that we're doing, climb, descents, cruise, you can just look out here and you can set it perfectly. So we'll talk a lot about that, we'll talk about uh, trim and how that works, we'll get you comfortable with using the rudder and the turns just a, a good variety of different things. Just getting a feel for the plane, seeing how things react. All the lessons we do out there are eventually gonna come back here to the pattern where slowly you're going to get the, the motions to be able to do the pattern work. So everything we do out there will come back here. All right. Homer traffic, two, three, and four, I'm on the roll, runway two, two, departure southbound, Homer. Okay, so give it to her. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Hold it in, make sure it's all the way. Okay, maintain that center line. We're waiting for our speed. It's somewhere around here. You're slowly pulling back. Slow, a little bit more, a little bit more. We're off. Nose on the horizon. Wings level. Track the center line and look at your rudder. Are you pressing any rudder right now? No, right rudder. It needs rudder. to be right rudder. Okay. Just enough to coordinate, not too much. Now you're doing it too much, okay? So just enough to keep that ball right in the middle and as relaxed as you can be. Right, you'll keep your hand there, good. Then we can fine tune our attitude, right? So that cowling, we're we should be climbing at 80, so you can tell we're a little bit above the horizon, at least with what I'm looking at, you're a little taller than me. But we should be about right here for a perfect attitude. And we'll, we'll learn more about trim, but how does this feel to just let go? Okay, it's good, there. good, yep. So now, why don't you just be flying with a light touch, okay? And we'll do a left hand turn out. Keep the spit off to your left hand side. Keep right rudder enough to coordinate. And we'll continue to climb up to 2,500. And without without this lock, the throttle will just start to fall back. It, it can creep, but you know, in the pattern, like in the pattern, I keep pressure on it, and then I have it locked enough where it won't creep anyway. It's like somewhere in between. This is good. How's that ball look to you? It looks like it's pretty uh, good. It's a little off to the right. Okay. So just keep it nice and center. That gives you an idea where you're at. So you're saying press, uh, step on the bubble? Step, so on, that would be step right. on the ball. Okay. Yep. okay. Step on the ball. All right, here comes your altitude. So kind of a rule of thumb is 10% of your climb speed. So that would be 50 feet before you can like start the process of leveling off so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so leveling off, we go power. Attitude first. Okay, get your attitude. Keep pushing, keep pushing. It's about right here. 
surprisingly, we have a lot of forward visibility once we put the nose down. Yep. Now power, about 2,400. And he's still got that pressure. You keep that pressure, you keep that attitude, okay? We're gonna work on that more in a second. And then trim. So we needed to keep that attitude, because that it came up, and now trim. So we're always trying to get a state where we can just kind of let go. Just flying with a couple fingers. So there we are. Could have done better on our altitude, but it's the first time. No big deal. Remember, the apartment is upstairs. APT, attitude, power, trim. Attitude, power, trim. Okay. Well, that view doesn't suck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty awesome. Let's go through our trim exercise. So I want you to keep this attitude no matter what, okay? Okay. Do not let it move. It's going to take muscle, lots of muscle. Okay, here we go. Don't let it move. You can use both hands in this case. Okay, that's one extreme. Now I'm coming the other way. Now you're going the other extreme, okay? Good, keeping that attitude. Here's the other extreme. This one should feel kind of worse. <laughs> okay, there's that extreme. Damn, really fighting it. Yep, okay, now coming back the other way to more neutral, which should feel right about in there, right? Let go. Yep, right about in there. Maybe a little bit more forward. So. There's different components to trim. There's the muscle part, which you feel and you keep your attitude in. It's kind of nicer that way because you know that you're fighting it, right? You know which way you're going to push. But then there's just the visual part of it. So now that we're here, go ahead and let go. And let's see what our attitude does. Uh, unfortunately, we said it perfectly. So say we're just a little bit off and we see our nose creeping like that. We're not going to feel much, but you can see the top of that cowling changing from the horizon. You see yep. it shrinking and expanding? Yep. So at first it's muscle, and then it's just visual looking there to see what you need to trim off and to keep it perfect. So what I do is I trim off the muscle stuff, and then I'm looking, looking, and I trim off just the visual. So keep that in mind. It's going to be something we repeat. So now I want you, with one hand and the trim wheel, to get a feel for which direction is which, I want you to roll the trim in the extremes. All right, now you can come back to neutral and be smooth the entire time. Don't let your attitude change. And once you get past the muscle, muscle switch to the visual and trim out your visual. It's a really nice day to do this. You see it dipping? Yep. So you can right. pull it the other direction a little bit. Pretty close. Close. If you're staring out front in the distance, you can really see it closing because it's still oscillating a little bit. You see that? Yep. What I do is kind of like microseconds of looking at it. Is like I let go and look at which way it's going and then flip the trim. So you'll get used to that and that process. All right, does that help you know what trim does a little bit? Yeah. Cool. We have the propeller working against us or with us all the time when we're turning, or at least when we're initiating turns. So I want you to stare straight ahead and watch what happens with the nose, okay? I'm not gonna do anything with the rudder. Okay, what happened with the nose? down. They kind of lag behind. So let me show you again. Okay, I turn. It lagged behind. You see that? Now it's finally turning. Yep. Alright, let's watch it one more time. This time I want you to look at the ball. See what the ball does. Yep. Same thing, right? Yep. So when we initiate a turn, put your uh, feet on the pedal here. I'm going to do it to the right again. I do just enough aileron, kind of like equal rudder to the amount of aileron that I'm turning. And that's just initially. So to initiate a turn, I do a little bit of rudder into that turn and then I release. Okay? Once I'm in the turn, it's fine, but what we're counteracting there is called adverse yaw. So let's try one to the left. So initiating the turn, 
nice and smooth and releasing that rudder and we're back in the center. So it's just getting used to that amount. Now, if I, if I do a big turn, like if I go to the right quite a bit, I'm pushing a lot of aileron, so I gotta push more rudder, right? Even if I'm already pointing to the right, I'm turning the aileron to the left, so I gotta push that rudder. You feel all that? Yep. All right, so every time I'm pushing the airplane, I'm pushing the rudder too proportional to how much aileron I'm using. All right, get to that, get to that level flight. So, yep, nose down just a little bit more. So we're level altitude. Memorizing again what this looks like. And now you can initiate that turn to the right. So just like turn toward the coast here. There you go, that's nice. Maybe a little bit of back pressure in the turn and then turn to the left. Aim for that cloud over there, the little puffy one. Okay, now roll your wings level. 773 is Fisher Creek, North Patio. Gotta use a little more rudder on that one. Now aim for this glacier over here, port lock. Good, yep, good, back pressure, good. And nice, that forward pressure as you're coming around, good. They're counteracting for all those things in your attitude flying. I think you're getting used to that. So adverse yaw, that's kind of what we're looking at there. We're using our rudder all the time. It'd be, it'd be much more um, prominent in like a tailwheel airplane, right? Uh, but it's definitely a thing. There's another thing that most people don't learn until much later on in their pilot life, and that is called overbanking tendency. It's something that we naturally overcome as pilots without even thinking about it. But let me show you what the control wheel does when we're not touching it, okay? So my controls, if I just turn this airplane and I leave it here, it's just gonna keep going, all right? It's gonna keep increasing its bank. Now as pilots, you, you've been doing it already and you didn't even know it, but to maintain your constant bank angle, what you do is you roll for maintaining that level of flight, but then naturally to maintain that bank angle, you work back the other direction just a little bit. You see how this is pointed that way? Yep. But really we're going that way. So that is overbanking tendency. The steeper you get, the more prominent it'll get away from you. So you can see it kind of happening here. But that's just something pilots were naturally counteracting and people don't even know. But it's again, one of those things that the airplane design is naturally doing. Back to the right. I want to show you uh, a demonstration on stalls and the energy state of the airplane, okay? Okay. So when we took off, we created all this energy just by powering forward, staying level, accelerating, getting that wind flow underneath the wing, right? Now that we're up here, we're going even faster. We've got a lot of lift, we're producing a lot of lift. And so we have a lot of potential energy. We have the altitude, we have the speed, we have all this potential energy. As pilots, we control that. We, we essentially control our own destiny on how the wing is flying, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna show you what happens when we get a little slow and what happens when we get way too slow. Okay which would be a stall. Now a stall is a momentary, um, the, the wing is trying to find the equilibrium again. We don't just fall or anything. Uh, it just, it's kind of seeking, it's seeking back to where it should be flying, okay? So my flight controls. I've been showing a stall before. Okay. Yep. We're gonna do a couple different stalls. Or actually we're just gonna do power off stalls today, like approach to landing stalls. So a little bit of flaps. So first off, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the power back all the way. So we're getting rid of some of that potential energy, right? Pull the carb heat, because that's what good pilots do. And I'm rolling that trim back so I don't have a bunch of pressure. Carb heat so that the... Uh, yeah, we're below, we're below 2100 RPM, so that's when carb ice can form. Okay. So we're just kind of rotating here. Obviously the wing is still flying. We're at a very good like glide to be able to just glide. Look how 
Look how well we're staying up. We could really pick somewhere to land, say we had an issue. Yeah. Now, pilots control their own destiny because this airplane, if I was to get this airplane slow enough, where I get it to stall, I'm going to show you what happens with me, the pilot, just lets go. Okay, okay I'm just going to let go. And you felt that little shimmy shake, I'm going to let go. Okay, now watch what happens. The wing's flying. It, it's definitely flying, but now we go into this this characteristic that was designed into the airplane for the airplane to always seek its equilibrium and fly again. The pilots force the airplane to stall. It's our choice if the wing keeps flying. That's what I'm trying to show you here. Does that make sense? Yep. So that's a good little uh, energy demonstration. Um, I'm going to get a little more altitude and I'm going to show you a, a couple more things on that. Because I want, I want to connect you to other senses other than just your sight because there's so much more going on. Like obviously sight dominates everything we're doing, but uh, there's a lot more going on. Yeah. And I'm going to have you take off one of your ear buffs once we get close. You don't have to do it quite yet since we're not pulled back yet, but uh, we're just going to listen to everything. I'll be real quiet and we'll just listen. Okay, so I'll pull back the power again. Add that car pee. So we get a little bit of that propeller noise. And we got air still rushing past the, the plane. So listen to what happens as we get slower. So even the, the act of getting slower, you can hear it getting quieter. These are already indications of a stall. Hear that? That. And almost a whistle. And then you feel the kinetic sense of that wing finding its equilibrium. Woohoo! And we're flying again. So. A little demonstration there. What, do you know what we're changing when I put the wing down like that? You know what we call that? Uh, sorry. Or rather, um, what is the what is the angle called at which the wing stalls? The critical angle of attack. Correct. The critical angle of attack, right? So all I'm doing when I release the pressure is I'm reducing the angle of attack again and that's getting the wing flying. Yep. We have that potential energy of altitude and some speed and everything where we can get it back. Okay, your flight controls, give us a right-hand turnout for scenery purposes. As we're going through this, I have a question for you. What's one thing you want to know more about when it comes to the fundamentals of flying skills and why do you want to know more about that? This is for all pilots, even if you already have a license. Feel free to answer in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll respond to you there. So let's work on going back to Homer. We're gonna do nice crisp altitudes. We're gonna do nice crisp headings. If we change our headings, we're gonna do our rudder. We're gonna do everything correctly. So let's try to like put everything together now with what you know. Okay. So climbing up to 3000 will work just fine momentarily. We'll see how you do with your level off, we'll see how you do with your trim, all that sort of stuff. So you see how stable that is? Yeah. I'm trimmed, I'm at a pretty good speed. And so that does most of the work. And then when I get here, I'm getting rid of that last little potential bit of energy. I'm pulling the power back, pulling the nose up. We're doing that stall we did earlier, but right above the runway, okay? Okay. So just putting this stuff in your mind. Okay, your flight controls, do the takeoff. 
Keep on centering line with that rudder. Power all the way. Feed off the brakes. It wants to pull left, so push right on the rudder. And you're ready for takeoff. Alright, so I'm going to let you do a lot of this. I'm going to do the radio calls. Definitely going to help you on the controls. We're just going to do that square pattern to make the radio calls. And more traffic, uh, Cessna 783 Foxtrot, uh, 2,000 feet, over both points, uh, descending into Sildovia. 500 feet is a good altitude to, to turn. One more traffic, two turn to form, left cross, one, two, two, for one final pattern. And we're still climbing. Got that climb attitude outside. Nice and smooth, gosh, that's gorgeous. Okay, rolling wings level. This way we can look for traffic under our wing and in front of us, and then turn. Again, rudder, right? And we're still climbing. More traffic, 2 3 form just turned on to the left downwind, 2 2 Homer, full stop. Alright, we're reaching our pattern altitude. I'm going to pull back my power. The reason I'm doing power here first is because I don't want to speed up. I just want to stay here. I want to add my carb heat and one notch of flaps. And then I get my attitude right. So then I set up for landing, right? Yep, carb heat, gas is on both, undercarriage is fixed gear, mixture is set, prop, seatbelt switches. All good. That's my Seagumps checklist. So we're flying parallel to the runway. We do correct for wind drift to do that. So, you know, the wind's blowing from this way. We might be aimed a little bit more into it. We are drifting toward it a little bit. And then we're kind of drawing a 45 to our touchdown point. So we are going to try to hit the white markers back there. Okay. It's a good 45 point. So power, power back, but don't let the nose come down. Just listen for it right about there. And now trim off that pressure. Homer traffic, 2-3 uniform, left base, 2-2. Two, two. Hey, we can roll wings over for a second. Check our final. Very important. Homer traffic, 2-3 uniform, final, 2-2. Two, two. And I do glance at my speed. We want to be at about 70 for our approach. Okay, so this is feeling pretty good. We're slowing down. Here come the runway lights. I did it too late, but that indicator's on the left. And final notch of flaps. Okay, see that? We can add a little bit of power and shallow it out. Okay, here you go. I'm gonna let you pull, okay? So power's out. Pull, 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 pull. A little less, a little more, a little less. <laughs> We're trying to find the sweet spot. That's like the hardest thing to figure out. Once you figure that out, it's time to solo. Cool. All right, let's head on in. Woo hoo! How did that feel? Super fun, man. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson with David. It's always a lot of fun as a flight instructor to do those foundational beginning lessons. So we went through some great things today. He did a great job, seemed to grasp things well, and I'm looking forward to the next lesson. So uh, make sure to like this video if you guys liked it, subscribe if you want to stick around, and turn on that notification bell if you don't want to miss a thing. You can always go to angleofattack.com. I have online ground school there and also check ride preparation called Check Ride Ace. Great to have you guys here. Make sure you jump in the comments and say hello. And until next time, throttle on. <laughs>